Shabbat Shalom, my friends. Welcome back. Well, the road to Passover is shortening. This Shabbat is called Shabbat Parah, one of the four special Shabbatot between Purim and Passover. On this Shabbat, we traditionally read uh, the story of the red heifer along with our regular sedra. It's a fascinating, mystifying story, that red heifer, uh, but that's an, another tale for another time. First Seder will be Friday evening, April 19th. Mark it down. Have you purchased your Shmura matzah yet for your Seder? And do you know not to use egg matzah for the special Seder plate? Don't use egg matzah. And have you bought those Afikoman gifts for the kids? You know, their expectations are pretty high. And will you offer the option of both traditional Ashkenazi haroset alongside of a variety of traditional Sephardi forms of haroset? Very interesting. So much to do. Okay, our Sedra, the one we're actually going to read along with the section on the para, uh, is known as Shmini, Leviticus chapter 9, verse 1 and following. For seven days, Moses has been conducting the ordination ceremonies for his brother Aaron and for Aaron's four sons. Aaron, of course, is going to become the Kohen Gadol, and the four sons uh, will become regular Kohanim. The tabernacle is being dedicated with awe, and with profound respect, for seven days there have been wonderful, unique sacrifices, blood, pigeon, goats, lambs, calves, and so forth. There were ritual acts. These were ritual acts of the greatest solemnity. The celebrants also were dressed in the most magnificent clothing. It was really quite special. But then, but then, on the eighth day, Yom Hashmini, the name of our center, Shmini, on the eighth day, something truly horrific happens. Two of Aaron's sons, two of the four, Nadav and Avihu, for reasons that thousands of years of interpreters, quite frankly, have not be, un, begun to uh, uh, resolve. For whatever reason, Nadav and Avihu brought an offering to God which had not been requested. An offering of what the text will call Esh Zara, strange alien, unwelcome fire. In an instantaneous response, as the two young men are bringing this offering to God, fire bursts forth from God and consumes them alive. They died instantly. And all of the celebration, all of the joy turns to grief. Now, the traditional Haftarah, the prophet's reading, is not read on this Shabbat because in Shabbat Parah there is a special Haftarah. But we can be a little bit flexible here, but only if you promise not to tell anyone that we strayed. If we look at the traditional Haftarah, we find a story from the time of King David. David is bringing the Aron HaKodesh, the Holy Ark, back from captivity to Jerusalem on a cart drawn by oxen. The cart is protected on all sides by soldiers from King David's army. The Ark tilts. One of the soldiers, a man named Uzzah, reaches out his hand to, to steady the Ark, and God strikes Uzzah dead. Shomer Riskin asks whether Nadav and Avihu meant serious disrespect. Were they offering a sacrifice to another god? Were they intentionally flaunting God's explicit commands? Were they maliciously leading the people away from the worship of the one true God? We just don't know. Maybe they were just guilty of, what, youthful exuberance, bringing more offerings to the altar than God had commanded. But what, okay, but what about Uzzah? He was walking alongside of the Aron HaKodesh, the most sacred object of the Jewish people, seeing the ark tilt on, on the ox cart, and, and, and the Aron is falling. He lifts up his hand to stabilize it. He touches the ark, and he dies. All 
Uzzah was trying to do was to protect the ark. And he paid for that devotion with his life. Another story. Most of us have heard of Rabbi Akiva. Akiva was born around the year 50 of our era. He was a shepherd, poor and illiterate, but he fell in love with Torah at the age of 40 and rose to become one of the greatest scholars and teachers that Jewish history has ever known, Rabbi Akiva. As an old man, Akiva joined the armed opposition to Roman control over Palestine, control that he strongly believed was threatening to strangle all of Jewish life. The result, Akiva was boiled in oil by the Romans and his body was hacked into pieces and the pieces of Akiva's body, the flesh, sold in the Roman market. It was said of his death at the time of his death in about 135 of our era, Zot HaTorah V'Zot Shara. This is Torah, and, and this is Torah's reward? In other words, is the end result of one who seeks to cleave to God hideous suffering. Nadav and Avihu, Uzzah, Akiva, dying horrible deaths because of their passionate love for God. But the story doesn't end there. Moses responds strangely to the deaths of two of his nephews. You have to struggle really hard to find any compassion for Moses here. The Torah says that Moses' first words to Aaron were, Remember, this is what God wants. Bikrovai ekadesh. It's a hard phrase to translate. Maybe the consolation that Moses is offering is, God is harshest upon those who who are the closest to God, if that's consolation. And then Moshe Rabbeinu, our rabbi, our teacher, Moses, warns Aaron, do not bear your heads and do not tear your clothes, lest you die and God's anger strike the whole community. As consecrated priests already, Aaron and his two surviving sons were forbidden to grieve, forbidden to mourn. Now, a father is not going to be allowed to rip his clothing. Brothers can't crumble to the ground in grief. Instead, they were told to continue with the rest of the designated sacrifices as if nothing had happened. As a side note, it's more than interesting that no mention is made here of Miriam, the aunt, or of Aaron's wife, the mother. In our text, they're simply invisible. This is also very bizarre. What shall we learn from the story of Nadav and Avihu? That going overboard in your desire to worship God can lead to tragic consequences? Is that our takeaway? What shall we learn from Uzzah? That being too close to the sacred puts your life in mortal danger? Is that our takeaway? And what can we learn from Akiva that not even 80 years of brilliant devotion to Torah can shield you from the cruel and barbarous wrath of Israel's enemies? Instead, let's learn the following. First of all, that Judaism is a religion of boundaries. Between Shabbat and the rest of the week, between Tov Varah, good and evil, between kosher and and trafe, milk and meat, holy and profane, well, timely, chomets and the foods of Passover, between Jerusalem and every other city on earth, between the land of Israel and all other lands. To live as a Jew is to accept the reality and the necessity of boundaries. To forget boundaries is a threat to our very survival. Lesson one. Number two, we shouldn't choose to prefer to pursue goodness and holiness in our deeds in the expectation of some protection, some reward, some special favor from God. That's just not 
how it works. Not all of the Torah Kiva had acquired could save him from being boiled in hot oil. Disease strikes us without regard to our moral standing. Ecclesiastes was surely correct when he noted that at the end of the day, death awaits us all, no matter who we are, no matter how much wealth or wisdom we have acquired, our end, everyone's end, will be the same. That's just how things go. And the third lesson, and my friends, maybe the hardest lesson of all. We can't allow ourselves to be crushed by our losses or by our pain. Loss and pain are as much a part of life as love and joy. We pray that we might be spared suffering. We pray that we may find joy. But there are no guarantees. But if we are loved, and if we love, if we're embraced, embraced by a community, if we prefer to build up rather than to tear down, if we turn away from that which corrupts and corrodes, then we just might have gathered the resources needed to turn our own personal darkness into light. For us, Torah casts light upon the truth, even as it urges us and inspires us to reach higher, to do better, to pay heed to the spiritual richness that lives within each of us, to hold tight to a noble and uplifting religious tradition. We can be so much more than we are today. The lessons we were born to keep on trying to be better for no reward, but because that is a sacred challenge. Okay, that's it. So let's keep on trying to meet that challenge to be so much more than we are today. And please, first step in being more, hit share so that others might join us in what is really a sacred journey and so that we might have company along the way. Shabbat Shalom. Have a wonderful Shabbat, a wonderful weekend.